The only person busier than you yesterday, Shefty, was Bill Belichick. What more can you tell us about what was an incredible day in New England? Green, I think it's a couple of things. It's an admission of how little talent there was in Foxborough and how much they needed to add to the cupboard to get back to being competitive and to get back to where they were. And I also think it's a statement that they don't want to experience another year like the one that they went through last year when they struggled the way they did, when they didn't make the playoffs. They came out early and they started spending. And it always seems interesting to me that when the entire league is going one way and spending on free agents, the Patriots sat back and never did nothing. And then yesterday, when most of the league is sitting back and doing nothing, the Patriots jump in, grab Matthew Judon, Jonu Smith, Nelson Aguilar, Jalen Mills, Kendrick Bourne, Davin Gotchu. You see all these players that all of a sudden they brought in, bringing back Dietrich Wise as well, re-signing Cam Newton last week, trading for Trent Brown. Think about how active they've been. Think about how many moves they've made. And think about how unpatriot-like that is compared to the way they've operated in other off-seasons. It used to be that it could be the status quo and supplement the roster here and there. And that's not the way that this team headed into this offseason when it knew it would be busy. But I think it surprised people how actually busy they were on the opening day of free agency. And it's worth reminding everybody it's really only a fraction of the additions they will have this year because they have players they're bringing back who opted out last year and they have a lot of draft capital, including the 15th pick in the first round. So, Shefty, safe to say they're not done in Foxborough at this point. No, listen, we are one day into free agency. And there are still a lot of good players out there right now. There are still players who could be traded. We still expect them at some point, whether it's via trade, via the draft, via free agency, to bring in another quarterback as well. And so this is just a tasting, a sampling of what they were doing. But clearly they made a statement yesterday. This was the most unusual day in the offseason history of the Patriots that we've seen in recent memory with how busy they were. Very atypical. Uh, if this was just the appetizer, I can't wait to see the main course. Shefty, outstanding. Keep scooping the players on their own news, okay? And we'll come back to you as we go. Meanwhile, let me bring some more of the squad in. R.C., Mike T., David Pollock are here. R.C., an instant reaction. You look at the moves they've made. You know the players they're bringing back. How good did the Patriots make themselves yesterday? They made themselves a lot better than they were. You heard Adam talk about the cupboard being bare. They had nothing. And that's why they're getting these auxiliary players. They're not going out to try to find one big free agent because they're one big free agent away from winning the Super Bowl. This team stunk. This team had nobody. So now we're going to add these pieces. We're going to add John Lou Smith. We're going to add Nelson Aguilar. And you're going to add Kendrick Bourne to the outside. Now you get to the pass rush with Matthew Judon and you're bringing back a lot of opt-outs on defense. Bill Bell Belichick understood that this team stunk. He even said it the, early on in the year. We went all in for the last five years, and we felt like, the, like it worked. Last year, they tried to win with coaching. They tried to win with pieces some things together. But Bill Belichick said, that is not going to work for me. I don't have time to sit around and wait to win. And I also don't have the GOAT playing quarterback to fill these holes. So I'm going to fill them myself through free agency, the draft, and put the, together the best team I possibly can to challenge the Buffalo Bills in the East. Uh, David Pollack, and we heard Shefty just say quarterback remains a question. They've probably not done there having brought back Cam last week, but as you yeah. look at them currently constituted, how good do you think they are? They don't, they don't necessarily – Maybe they, they might not have that quarterback that I think everybody wants or that he's settled on, but they have an option with Cam Newton. And what did you do? You put speed around Cam Newton. What can Cam Newton do? They, this can be a great running football team. We know that. We, we saw what they were last year. And they were competitive in spurts. They didn't have Nelson Aguilar that could go down the field and go beat man-to-man -man coverage. Now, I think having a huge deep threat like that, they know they're going to be a run team, a play-action team. But I think one more key to all this is you can go to the draft. And, and Mike T., I want to get your opinion on this, too. You can go to the draft and you can get players. You don't necessarily know what you're getting, and they don't have immediate impact. They went out and got seven, eight guys now that they know – they know what they've done in the National Football League, so they know they got better immediately. Now you go to the draft, you supplement some of that, hopefully get some good picks and develop them over the years, but you got players that can come in right now and fix how bad you were a year ago. Yeah, that's right. And then, Mike T., I'm, I'm fascinated by the psychology of this. Uh, the whole world went nuts on Twitter yesterday seeing Bill Belichick doing all of this, 
And people wonder how much of this is about revenge, how much of this is about Tom Brady leaving and winning the Super Bowl last year. The psychological piece, I'll remind everyone, you were a man who has shared a sauna in your life with Bill Belichick. You worked with him and for him, so you know him well. What do you think of the psychological piece of Belichick on this day being the one who sort of sets the tone? Karini, this all started on January 3rd, 2021, right after they beat the New York Jets. Coach Belichick is not a what-you-see-is-what-you-get guy. He is a world-class, relentless competitor who he doesn't share that with very many people. And it wasn't good enough last year. This has nothing to do with Tom Brady. As R.C. and David allude to, they got tough, smart, versatile players. That's been the hallmark of the Patriot program for two decades. And it wasn't good enough for him for the 2020 season. And as soon as he could, he started his plan for next year. We just happened to see it yesterday. And he went at warp speed. But that plan was, I'm telling you, started January 3rd in the parking lot of Foxborough when he said, this isn't good enough. We have standards here. We have standards in everything we do. And we're going to be much better in 21. And you're making a great point, Greeny. They also got Dante Hightower back, Patrick Chung back. Two really good stars. So when you add that to the hall of the players yesterday, they are discernibly better than they were three months ago. And it's worth reminding everybody, this is an unusual season. So many teams don't have any cap room to work with because of the, the shrinking salary cap based upon the pandemic. They had a lot of, of, of money to spend, and they went out and spent it yesterday. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.